Well, hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. I came all the way from Argentina to share a gift with you. And yes, I know, you don't know me and I don't know you. And we are different, we are all different. However, there is one thing that we have in common. There is one thing that brings us a little bit closer to each other today and makes us equal. And that's actually pain. We all have been through painful moments. I've been there many times. You know those moments that made you question your abilities, your self-worth, and even your own existence? Those moments that you felt nothing but despair and a black hole into your soul. But I have good news. What if I told you that everything you know about pain is actually wrong? What if I told you that there is an unconventional way to find prosperity by following your pain? Would you believe me? Well, if you are going through a painful moment right now, I'm here for you. Back it up, because I'm about to take you on a little journey that will help you transform that pain into prosperity. And that have helped me use pain as a catalyst of growth. Are you ready? Because I'm ready to tango. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, let's do it. So let's go with the first element of the P formula. And that's actually the power of emotional pain, especially. See, let's explore a little bit first what pain is all about. Just a little bit. See, pain is a universal experience. That's why we are equal today. Everybody goes through pain. It's part of our human existence, whether it's a heartbreak, I'm recently there, or a business failure, I've been there many times too, or a health battle, like my niece Simona faced when she was only two years old. But see, we live in a society where feeling pain, especially emotional pain, is wrong. We live in a society where we were taught to avoid pain and run away from it. But what if I told you that by doing that, you are already missing the seeds of growth and transformation? What if I told you that pain is not your enemy, but your greatest teacher? Well, I will say that today I'm happily uncomfortable. And being uncomfortable, it's part of life. My question to you is, do you want to grow or do you want to be comfortable? because you can't be both. In order for growth to take place, we need to allow yourself to feel that discomfort because it has a hidden beauty, it has a message. See, Ray Dalio once says, and I really love this equation, if you add reflection to pain, here is where progress starts. So pain is there for a reason. Follow your pain, because it's supposed to trigger some sort of action, a realization of truth, some sort of change, a transformation. So be aware of the message of your pain, because the purpose of your pain is to turn your mess into a message. Do you want to know how I found my other two P's that are keeping me today alive and here, which are passion and purpose? to actually find prosperity. It was by following my pain during this moment that I was with Simona. But let me tell you how I found my passion, by following my pain. I was 30 years old. That day, my dad died. All of, all of a sudden, out of the blue, I felt nothing but lost. I was desperate. I was so angry with my friends. I was angry with life. But that day I saw my mom. I look at her eyes and her tears and I become very close to that pain. And me, my brother, my twin brother, Simona's father, and my mom, we went and sleep together because we figured out that by embracing pain, it was the only way to push through pain. We needed to ask ourselves, what was the message of that? Why did I lose my dad? I was asking me, myself that. But no, that night, 
I went and I slept with the two of them, my mom and my twin brother. It was summertime. And I faced in pain so badly, so close, that I got the message. That day, I lost my dad, but I found my freedom. And this is how I did it. I dream after that pain that a plant, a Japanese plant, was actually coming out of my stomach. So the next day, I wake up like a little kid and I say, Mom, Mom, I was dreaming. Like, I have plants coming out of my stomach, but I feel so sad, Mom, so empty. And at the same time, I was so open with that goon. And as Rumi says, it's where light enters. So I went here and I look up the meaning of that plant in Japanese. And you know what it meant? I got the message. It meant success in your projects and in everything you do and hold tight to life. So that day, I quit my job because I realized that the next day, actually, I realized that I was living on my interest. And see, interest is just a child. It didn't make me happy. I was stuck in my job. I was sad. I didn't want it to go. I was working. I was not playing. So that day, I quit and I found my passion. Do you want to know what's my passion about? You. Yes. People. People is my passion. My daddy was my passion. And I didn't know. I was so regretting the fact that I didn't celebrate him. I didn't value him. So that day, I found passion by following that pain. And today, I'm here celebrating him. Now, how did I actually found the second P, which is the second element for the P formula to prosperity? You know, passion and purpose, which is right here, pretty close to our feet, it's something that really sustains you from the inside when life gets tough, right? It makes you want to jump out of bed if you find the golden white you wake up every morning. That moment, it was with my niece, Simona. Simona Alcina. She was only two years old when she was diagnosed with cancer. I was still dwelling, my dad, okay, lost. That day, I will never forget. And this is not working, and that's okay. <laughs> that's fine, I'm in pain, and that's okay. So anyway, let's stay with her. Apparently, she wants to be on the stage, all right. Why not? So anyway, that day, I found out my purpose. How did I do that? Well, I look at my twin brother's eyes, the father of Simona. We hold hands very, very tight. That day was Tuesday. The doctor said that Simona was not going to make it. But guess what? We said to each other, you and me, sister, we are going to find out with what is the mission of this tremendous pain. Let's follow this and let's get the message, but let's get it right, right? With that tongue was spicy in our, in our blood. So that day, I started to face in pain very, very close. And I look at Simona every day. I look at her process. Here is another P. Respect the process of, of healing. Respect the process of that pain. It's there for a reason. So that day, I learn something new. I learned the art of Kintsuhi. See those golden lines? The Japanese believe that you, if you can put all the pieces back together or of a broken pottery, it's with gold and silver, you fuse them, the wounds, it makes that pottery even more beautiful. You know what Simona did? She used art to win. She used art. She painted her scar in her stomach. And I started to paint it myself like I am wearing today, okay? So um, I found my purpose. And I'm like, what do we need to learn from this? What is the purpose of life? Well, the purpose of that pain, it was for us to use pain as a catalyst of growth, to use that pain to make justice to her pain. I'm making justice to that pain that she went through today. Why? Because I'm impacting others. I'm using pain to make it more beautiful. And that's what real success is about. When you are in pain and you still help others. 
that's Kintsugi art. So thank you, Simona. Now let's go to another thing that is called the element of perspective. It's another P that is right here with me. Perspective. That's a very important thing that you need to bear in mind and become aware when you are going through pain. Maybe you are in pain today or discomfort. Well, make sure that you understand what is perspective because pers perspective, it shapes our reality. That's how powerful it is. See, we measure life, I do, we all do, by how or based on how we feel, upon how we feel. Hmm? That's an Argentinian accent. Okay, mm -hmm. so we uh, base our, our days uh, upon how we feel, and how we feel is based on how we view things, right? So if you are going through a painful moment right now, you can choose to see pain as a bridge to gain new insights like we did, to be a better person, to reach new levels of awareness and understanding and get deeper and get closer and become the better version of yourself. So we have pain, we have passion, we have purpose, we have perspective, and here it is something that I really enjoy because I'm talking, right? That's the power of the palabras. Palabras in English, well, in Spanish, well, it means language, okay? Palabras, words, the way we talk to each other. See, why is palabras and, and the way you talk to yourself during a vulnerable moment so important? Well, the way you talk to yourself is the way it's going to happen. Your day is going to be defined by the way you choose your words. That's how powerful they are. So make sure that if you are feeling vulnerable, you choose the right words. Taste your words before you spit them out. Okay? Taste them. Because, for instance, you cannot avoid negative thoughts. They are going to happen. Negative, you know, the way you talk to yourself. But there is one thing that you can do. Who likes peace? Feel serenity. Everybody, right? Okay. Here you go with the, with the formula of the peace. Make sure that you filter the way you talk to yourself by, first of all, asking yourself, wait a minute, my words are promoting positivity? Are my words promoting that empowerment of myself every morning? Are these words promoting amor? Are these words promoting compassion? So you cannot stop thinking, but you can change the way you talk to yourself. So if you're cooking your words, taste them. If they taste like vitamin D and they propel you forward during a vulnerable moment, then go for it. Wear your words as you wear a good outfit, right? So every morning, this is what I do. I wear the words as I wear a good outfit. So I choose the language outfit. That's my invitation to you because that's going to define your self-worth, okay? Now let's go to the last seven <coughs> P of the formula. My favorite one, my passion, people. See, a painful moment, it's very important to ask yourself, what kind of persona do you want to be? What kind of people is around you? Because see, pain is a beautiful starting point and a tool to self-discovery. And when you self-discover many things about you, and that pain gives you information about what you have to work to be better, you can use it to become a better version of yourself. Because what if I told you that this life is about being more humans? We all talk about being healthy, well-being, right? But we act more like human doings. All the time, all the time. Let's do, let's do, let's do. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be during a painful moment? I choose to be kind, like Simona. She was so sweet. And you know what? I feel so sexy because I'm kind. I feel so sexy because I'm a good person. And I'm in pain, but I'm still feeling sexy, even if many ones rejected me. But you know what? Don't worry about that, because all you need is one person to say yes, okay? So when a pain comes to you, take it as an opportunity 
to become better. Let's make success the size of our kindness, the size of our hearts. Who do we want to be? And not as the size of our wallets. So choose to make of those pain full moments a bridge to impact other lives. That's how you push through pain, being a better person. We need in this world today more humans that are good to themselves. Because if you're good to you and you become a better person, well, not person, but person, then, then you can be better for the world. And we need more humans today. So follow your pain. Thank you so much.